in peace amongst the stars, Leonard Nimoy. Oh, man, the man that played the legendary Mr. Spock and voiced Galvatron. Man. And recently, uh, what was his name? Sentinel Prime, he, uh, he voiced. But, uh, man, Spock is gone. That's crazy. You know, I remember um, reading... No, 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 no. I remember seeing a, uh, a special on Star Trek and, you know, how when the series started, you know, uh, William Shatner, Captain Kirk was the man. When Spock was introduced, he became so popular that he started to overshadow Shatner's fame. And I think they had said something about how they kind of maybe had to pull the character back a little bit because they wanted the captain to be the star of the show. And then, if it, it, like, they just couldn't stop it. So it was always them, too. You know what I mean? It, it was, you know, uh, the, um, you know, frickin' frack, you know, after that because it, people just love Spock's character so much. And he's, man, he's a part of Americana. He is a part of pop culture. He's a part of movie history for the rest of his life. To go out and to leave that footprint in time and life in the world, he's one of the rare ones. You get what I'm saying? There's only certain celebrities that's like, I mean, he's so a part of our culture now that, you know, he'll live literally forever. So, came across this uh, article on. Yahoo News. I don't know if I'm gonna read the whole thing, but I will read. I will read until I get tired of it. You know what I mean? But I just want to see what um, are the specifics on this. All right. So it says Litter Nimoy, who won fame and fans with his portrayal of logic-bound half-alien Mr. Spock in the Star Trek series and movies, died on Friday. He was 83. You know, I didn't know he lived that. I didn't know he was 83. Is if the picture on the page is recent, he looked damn good for 83. Like a lot of times at 83, people look like they're on their last leg. Anyway, it says uh Nimoy who had bottled battled chronic obstructive pulmonary disease died in the morning at his home in Los Angeles, Bel Air section. His agents, Bob and David Gersh, said in a statement. We return you now to the stars, Leonard, fellow Trek, Star Trek cast member George Takai wrote on Facebook. You taught us to live long and prosper, and you indeed did, friend, said Takai, recalling the trademark phrase uttered by Nimoy's character. Nimoy had long struggled with a love-hate relationship with the role of Spock, the half-human, half-Vulcan first officer on the Starship Enterprise but came to accept its part in his life. Last year, he disclosed on Twitter that he had been diagnosed with, C <coughs> with COPD, a progressive lung disease. Okay. I really wasn't sure exactly what it was. He said, I quit smoking 30 years ago. Not soon enough, he tweeted to his 810,000 followers. Grandpa says, quit now. Nimoy had other roles during his lengthy TV career, film and theater. He directed successful movies, wrote books, composed poetry, published photographs, and recorded music. Okay, I know he did all that. But he will be forever linked to Spock in the original 1960s Star Trek TV series and subsequent movies. Known for suppressing his emotions and using logic to guide his actions, the pointy-eared Spock, whose father was Vulcan and whose mother was from Earth, became one of science fiction's best-known, most beloved characters. You damn right. U.S. President Barack Obama, who has been compared to Spock for his prominent ears, and cool-headed demeanor called Nimoy and his character the center of Star Trek's optimistic, inclusive vision of humanity's future. I love Spock, the president said in a statement. 
For years, Nimoy resented that Spock defined him, but ultimately came to accept that his life would be intertwined with the character who inspired a fervent fan following. His feelings were summed up in the titles of his memoirs, I Am Not Spock, in 1975, and I Am Spock, two decades later. So he came to terms with it, it seems like. Uh, says, I was involved in something of a crusade to develop a reputation as an actor with some range, Nimoy wrote. I am not Spock. I went through a, a definite identity crisis. The question was whether to embrace Mr. Spock or to fight the onslaught of public interest. I realize now that I really had no choice in the matter. Spock and the Star Trek uh, and Star Trek were very much alive and there wasn't anything that I could do to change that. Still he wrote that if given the choice of being any other TV character, he would choose Spock. Nimoy had often confronted the original series creators over the conception of Spock and his input was responsible for many aspects of the character. He came up with the Vulcan nerve grip that rendered foes unconscious and the split-fingered Vulcan live long and prosper salute. He said the gesture was inspired by one he had seen worshippers make in his synagogue when he was a little boy. Nimoy signed off his tweets with LLAP, an abbreviation for live, live long and prosper. Yeah, he definitely embraced the character. Relationship with Shatner. Star Trek followed the Enterprise's crew as they explored the world and encountered aliens. Spock was first officer and science officer under James T. Kirk, played by William Shatner. The two helped make Star Trek a cultural phenomenon. Shatner and Nimoy sometimes had professional rivalry, see, I told y'all, but maintained a long friendship. I loved him like a brother. We will miss his humor, his talent, and his capacity to love, Shatner said in a statement. NBC canceled the original TV series in 1969 after three series, three seasons, but it found success during syndicated reruns in the 1970s and inspired fan conventions with hordes of devotees. It jumped to the big screen by the end of the decade. Nimoy was not thrilled about taking part in the big budget film, first film, Star Trek The Motion Picture in 1979, but it was a financial success leading to many sequels. Nimoy agreed to appear in Star Trek The Wrath of Khan in 1982 only after the producers promised him a great death scene uh, and other sweeteners. Even though Spock dies at the end at the movie's end, Nimoy reprised, reprised the role in the next four Star Trek films. He directed the third and fourth ones. Mm. Mm. Uh, after those efforts, is almost over, let's see. After those efforts, Nimoy branched out and directed the comedy Three Men and a Baby. I didn't know that, okay. Uh, the top money-making movie of 1987. Uh -huh, I didn't know that. In the successful 2009 Star Trek reboot of the film franchise, Zach Zachary Quinto took over the role of Spock, but Nimoy appeared as an older version of the character. I remember that. And he did a great job as Spock, too. Nimoy, the son of Russian Jewish immigrants, was born in 1931 in Boston and began acting at the age of eight. In the 1950s and 60s, he had roles on TV and in movies, including Zombies of the Stratosphere. Later, he hosted TV series In Search of... Uh, and co-starred in 1978's Invasion of the Body Snatchers film remake. His, he, his renown as Spock led to quirky guest appearances on TV shows in recent decades, including the cartoons, The Simpsons, and Futurama, in which he provided the voice of his own disembodied head, and on The Big Bang Theory, in which he was the voice of an opinionated Spock doll. Nimoy was married twice and had two children. He is survived by his wife, Susan, children, and grandchildren. There we go. I got to tell you this, y'all. 
If I became an iconic character in movie history, like I'm, I'm, I'm personally, I'm kind of fine with that. But I can understand as an actor that you know, if I, you know, became a specific character, I was just like, yo, that's who you are. Like Christopher Reeve, that's Superman. You know, Michael Keaton, and now um, Christian Bale, they're both Batman. But Michael Keaton, he was Batman. But Christian Bale, the, uh, you know, he's just, he's he's the second Batman. Both of them think Batman, you think them too. Those are literally what you think, you know. And, uh, you know, can go on and on. You know, Lou Ferrigno, he's, um, he's uh, sorry, uh, the Hulk. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's the Terminator. You know what I mean? Like, there's certain characters that are so fucking iconic. You know, Michael J. Fox, he's Marty McFly. You know, it is what it is. But there's a certain point, I think, that once you conquer something, you want to expand. And that's when it comes into, like, look, I want you to see that I have range, you know, that I can be an Oscar-winning actor. And I understand that. I get that. But I think he came, he probably just came to terms with, like, look, people identify me with this character and it's my most popular work ever maybe not my best work but my most popular work ever shit just embrace it man you know i think he just said you know what he's part of me he's part of who i am he's part of my fame my fortune my legacy let me accept him while doing other things if i become great in other things let's do it like, I didn't know he created, you know, the Three Minute Baby. I didn't know that. I mean, that he directed it, you know what I mean? So, he put his mark on other things. But, you know, to me, I'm always going, me personally, he's Spock and he's Galvatron. All right? Post your comments down below. Let me know what you think about Mr. Uh, Nimoy passing. One million subscribers. Woo!